So, um, uh, for those of you that are speakers, we've been asked to address these different points during our talk. I'll do my best to try to uh, cover as many of these as possible. And really, the, the background in terms of the area of control in Pennsylvania started um, about three years ago when we were able to get a grant from the, uh, from the Department of Agriculture to start to look at, at that, that topic. And really, our interest at that point was to try to develop a tool that might help improve um, the Pennsylvania herd health and, and try to keep our local industry there competitive because compared to the Midwest, we faced a, a lot of challenges in terms of labor and feed costs and things like that. And so, you know, health has always been an advantage that we, we really want to try to maintain that. And so really what we did was we focused on uh, spatial imaging of farms and then starting to look at some of the disease status. And so we were able to generate uh, maps like this where uh, what you can see here are the red dots would be PERS positive farms um, and use this to start to identify some of the uh, sites, that, which would be the blue sites that were negative uh, that might be at risk. And really that's kind of as far as we got and what uh, the, some of the challenges we faced at that point was um, this is only a subset of the industry data, so you didn't really have the industry was not all that much on board with it. But over the course of the study, uh, the time that we've been working on this, um, some things have changed and really given us some kind of renewed uh, energy on this project. And the larger industry players have made uh, some uh, progress in terms of cleaning up their system, so the overall prevalence of PERS, we believe, is, is less in Pennsylvania. And then they started to think about the advantages of, of area control and have started to drive that. And of course, um, then uh, the interest in this topic by BI has certainly fostered uh, the effort in Pennsylvania and maybe even in some cases, maybe even fueled it. So um, this is kind of where we're at at this point. This is the, the statewide database that we have. And what one can see, if you're familiar with the geography of Pennsylvania, most of the um, production is kind of centered here in the center of, of, of the uh, state. That would be kind of Harrisburg is stuck right there. This is Lancaster County, which is the kind of historical seat of the industry. Um, and what we know about our database is we've got about 400 sites. It accounts for about 70,000 sows in their downstream production. And based uh, as compared to kind of the USDA uh, stats, we estimate that this is about three quarters of the production in the state are presently accounted for in our database. Now, obviously, we still have some more work to do uh, to increase uh, the database to, to get all the sites. Um, but when one starts to look at uh, production, swine production, in a geographic sense in Pennsylvania, one of the things that we recognize is that it's actually really quite diverse. Um, we have uh, different areas uh, with different geographies where pigs are being raised. And there are several other attributes that seem to differ across these areas, including the density of farms, uh, what stages of production might be present there, and then often the number of, of stakeholders. So when we start to think about neighborhoods in Pennsylvania, uh, the question that came to mind uh, right away was, you know, are we really going to need different uh, control strategies for different geographic areas? And I think uh, one of the things that is intriguing to us is as we go forward in Pennsylvania, uh, can we actually, you know, generate information that's going to be relevant to uh, places outside of Pennsylvania only because maybe uh, one of our subsets of production uh, scenarios is similar to other parts of the country. And what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time and actually kind of share with you a couple examples of, of what I mean by this diversity of, of production. And so um, I'll just show you the map and point out a couple of the salient features that differentiate these areas. And so this is uh, so-called what we call the northern tier, uh, and it's a fairly large area. It's defined by about 15,000, uh, 1,500 square miles, and within that area, there's only about 17 sites. And what uh, is interesting uh, to us about this area is that it has fairly low farm density, so we just simply uh, characterize that as a dispersion, if you will. So it's one farm every uh, 87 square miles. Um, Another thing we looked at was the ratio of finishers to sows, so animal inventories. And so it's kind of intermediate. There's about four times as many finishers in this area as there are sows. Um, but, you know, what's really striking here, of course, is the fact that um, 
these animals are all controlled by a single entity. So this is certainly an attractive area when one comes to think about setting up regional control. Um, and you know, I think echoing what Dale and JP said in the beginning, um, you know, obviously this is an area where we want to go first, um, and because uh, you would predict success there. Now we have other areas, uh, so-called Blue Mountain. Now this is a smaller area; it's about 500 square miles. There's about 24 sites in, in here, so it uh, has a somewhat higher density of farms, about a farm every 21 square miles. Um, there's a better balance here between finish and, and sows, so there's actually a fair amount of sows in, in this area, and there's um, only three stakeholders here. And now these are actually all large integrators, and I think this is an example where, in terms of trying to test drive getting people to play in the same sandbox, that this might be a good example, and we'd hope to be able, if we have success here, then be able to hold that up to the industry uh, in other parts of the uh, state to say that, yes, you know, we really can uh, collaborate and make progress. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, what I wake up in cold sweats about at night would be uh, Western Lancaster County here, uh, where this is about 400 square miles. Uh, there's about 85 sites here, um, and it has high farm density. It's about five square miles per site. Um, tremendous number of finishers in this area for Pennsylvania, so there's about 14 times as many uh, uh, finish animals inventories compared to sows here, um, and there's a large number of stakeholders. And uh, what uh, isn't maybe apparent from this, we understand that this area is probably heavily undersampled um, because uh, historically, uh, Lancaster is also the, the seat of, of many of the Plainsec uh, farmers who have not been particularly willing to participate in our, our early efforts. And so we know that there's a lot of other small sites out there that are not presently accounted for. So, uh, you know, I would see this as being our, our most challenging area probably uh, to work through. So that's just some of the diversity that, that we have. And like I say, I mean, I think for us, what's interesting in Pennsylvania is this ability as we go forward and identify these different regions to maybe uh, in parallel develop uh, and identify strategies that, that are going to be applicable outside uh, the state of Pennsylvania. So um, this just summarizes uh, some of that information uh, in, in a little more detail. You know, you can just point out and see here that the south base actually is not all that different across those three regions, but large differences in terms of finishers and also then large differences in the number of stakeholders. So, but this is just kind of how we're starting to conceptualize things in Pennsylvania. Um, our plan, uh, really, uh, what I'm going to suggest is that through the original grant, I think we've made a lot of progress, and this is just reiterating uh, more or less what JP had laid out, and we're kind of following that blueprint. Um, much of the feasibility effort was done in the course of the existing grant, and so really our goal for the summer is really to try to tackle uh, objectives two and three here. You know, we've got some progress made in terms of farm location. We need to flush that out, and I think we see probably by doing the, the risk assessments, um, that will give us a chance to, to clean up some of the site work. And then obviously we're going to be focused down here um, on objective number three here in terms of learning more about the purse status, um, the animal flows, and then these risks. So that's really our goal is, and I think it's maybe optimistic, but we want to set the bar high for ourselves, is to really be some time by the end of this year, 2010, it have the information we need then to start to think about regional control uh, strategies. So uh, the work group we've put together, um, obviously the project is kind of centered at the university, but we've had very good uh, collaboration uh, and cooperation from the local veterinarians, um, particularly Dr. Paul Pitchers uh, here with us today. He's going to uh, be helping, uh, taking a major role in the risk assessments, as well as uh, Andy Stas, who's a veterinary student from Pennsylvania who's being supported by BI. Uh, and then we you know, uh, have some uh, buy-in from some of the larger industry players as well. And so just trying to keep that group together and moving forward. Um, and then uh, the final thing, uh, we started, was asked to talk a little bit about challenges. So as, you know, I start to get my head around this, these are the three things that really come to mind. Uh, certainly uh, funding is a big issue when you start to look at the cost of trying to do this. Uh, we're hoping that uh, 
for some of the larger farms that have existing control programs, we can piggyback on those in terms of the, the testing costs, but we recognize that there are going to be uh, a significant number of smaller farms that we're probably going to have to provide some kind of financial incentive to get them to do the testing, and that starts to add up pretty quickly. Um, the, another issue is producer recruitment, certainly going out and talking to people. We already have identified you know, people that at this point they're in a mindset where um, it just doesn't make financial sense to them to pursue any kind of purse control beyond what they're doing. Uh, so I'm going to have to, you know, that will take some time to, to change their minds, and then that kind of leads into, I think, the, the last, uh, uh, what I see as a challenge is recognizing what the real time horizon is for this, and it's, you know, it's a long, to look at an industry, it's a pretty long time, uh, time horizon.